pole sport does not affect my body confidence. I mean, that just is natural to me. I started pole dancing last April. So the first time I tried pole, I felt nauseous because I was spinning. <laughs> the first move that I did was basically just holding onto it and spinning around. I did not consider pole dancing inclusive. Having a disabled person show up does not indicate inclusivity. It means that more likely that person is doing a whole lot of adapting to an environment that is not equipped for them. There are not a lot of disabled pole dancers. Making waves in the pole dancing community, 36-year-old Erin Clark has learned to adapt her congenital spine disorder to pole performance while competing in some of the world's most competitive pole competitions. Sacralogenesis is a spinal defect. So the base of my spinal column didn't form. It was just, it never existed. And so some muscles work and some don't, and some places I feel and some places I don't. It's randomly. <laughs> I know that there's a, an assumption that because I'm deformed and can't walk that I should definitely be uncomfortable with my body and not like it and want to change it. <laughs> I'm just confident with it. That's, um, I can't sincerely say that I struggle with body confidence. I mean, I have bad hair days from hell that I do not enjoy, but like, it, as a general rule, I have not, I've always naturally felt confident in my body. I don't like the way people treat me based on how it looks to them. I've been preparing for the world championships since. April, when I won the Nationals. I train about a half an hour Hello. once or twice a week. I have learned everything I know on the pole from Salima. She's the best performer. I mean, she's amazing. She rocks the stage, you know. She has this ability to show the emotion that I don't know many people who have this, like natural. She's really good. She's a really good performer. Oh, and I perform. Huh. I've always been a performer. When, like when you get it right, you know, and there's like no, you're not thinking anything. My body is just taken over the movements and the rush and the, oh, there's nothing. There's no other feeling like it. You can't really expect her to do the moves like other people do. But it doesn't mean that she can't do them, you just have to find a way. The first time that I competed, there was no disabled category. And then I had some concerns about the reasons I was accepted. Because there wasn't any system for me to be judged. So what was their intention behind having me on a stage? There's just so many pole moves that I can't do. So we had to find like within the code of points, like which ones can I maybe do? Yeah, I love to win. <laughs> I like to win for real though, you know? Like I don't want to be, I don't want it to be given to me just because I showed up. Um, I want to be the best. I want everyone to know that I'm the best. Or at the very least, I want to be very good. There is now an official disabled category in pole competitions, which Erin has been championing since she began practicing the sport. Although the rules for judging are still to be ironed out. Inclusivity, accessibility do not happen by accident. They're very deliberate processes that involve, you know, thought and action. Most of the world isn't inclusive. It's just, she was born like this and and she has to deal with it, so it's just her basic needs and she has a right to them. I think it's just the life that made her an activist because she has to like defend herself all the time, all the time. Pole dancing, it represents something that's important to me. A constant part of my life being segregated and being discriminated against. 
I'll participate so that it can become inclusive over time, hopefully. <laughs>